No. You're not going to treat anybody like you're not going to do that to each other. Amen? It's the same thing I tell you. You wouldn't put up that in your own home, and we won't put up with that here. We cannot be that way. Out of love for Christ and the brethren. Listen, the world hates us. Get this through your head. (laughs) You're looking at it. Look around you. This is what you have. And as the times get darker, you got to understand something, friend. This is all you're going to have. Don't bite and devour each other. Don't do that. You cause grievous wounds when you do that. And sometimes never heal. This I say then, right after that verse, he said, Take heed that you be not consumed one of another. This I say, then walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to the one and the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. You know, the quickest way for Satan to get the victory, he knows full well that we will guard against outside intruders that try to harm the flock. So he'll work double time in with those on the inside to bite and devour each other. Paul warned against that. He said that you be not consumed. Take heed that you be not consumed. That you be not that you, not, that you don't bite and devour one another. By the way, that devouring is a trait of Satan. You understand? Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Don't be like the devil. Amen. Don't bite and devour each other. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. What's he talking about? The wrath, strife. Don't tell me you're a soldier keeping rank when you're backbiting your brother and maximizing his flaws or just overall putting him down. That's a work of the flesh, friend. That's not a work of the Spirit. That's stirring up strife and discord, and God hates it. Proverbs 25, 23 says, As the north wind driveth away rain, so doth an angry countenance a backbiting tongue. Contention heats the Spirit and puts families and societies into a flame. And that fire is commonly kindled and kept burning by whispers and backbiters. What is backbiting? It's speaking badly of someone who is not present. It's to censure, slander, reproach, or speak evil of the absent. It's the act of slandering the absent. Biting and devouring each other over faults, or bringing up my brother's faults, or even perceived faults all the time, in a way to defame him in some way when he's not there backbiting listen folks that's not speaking with one mind and one mouth glorifying God the ra- listen listen to this this trap gives his advice here he says the ready way to be rid of tail bearers is to browbeat them for like whelps if we stroke them they lay upon us and defile us with fawning but give them a rap and they are gone so here carry therefore in this case a severe rebuke in thy countenance as god doth in psalm 80 verse 16 be not a resetter to these a resetter to these privy thieves a receptacle for these Mirrors nominous, as one calls them, the tail bearer is as a blameworthy as the tail. The tail here is as blameworthy as the tail bearer. And he that loves a lie is as he that makes it. Listen, if, if one of you are starting to browbeat your brother, talk bad about your brother or sister in Christ, you say, hey, wait a minute, we should, let's not, let's pray for him. How about that? How about we pray for him instead of bash him? Oh, I know, because bash him does a whole lot of good. No, it feeds your ego. That's what it does. It feeds your ego and makes you feel better yourself to tear somebody down. But you know what it doesn't do? It doesn't help the situation at all, does it? Well, what does help? Prayer. 
Maybe I need to pray for my brother and sister before I complain, murmur, talk bad about them, down, downgrade them and talk about what they've done or what they haven't done or how they don't measure up to me because I'm such a great Christian and everybody else just, sorry guys, you're just losers. You just don't measure up to me. Someday you'll be as good as me. Oh, nobody's ever said that. No, nah, but you think it. That's why when we look at somebody that's maybe not doing something they should be doing, we're comparing ourselves among ourselves, which is not wise. Well, they don't preach as much as me, or they don't do as much as me, or they don't give as much as me, or they don't, they don't. Okay. Does that mean you're better? Does that mean you're better than them? Backbiters. What are backbiters? Those who calumniate the slander or speak ill of those who are absent. Listen to this. Whispers declare secretly and with great reserve the supposed faults of others. Backbiters proclaim them publicly and unavowedly. See the difference? Whispers go to their tent. They go back and they whisper in private to people and tell them how bad somebody is. Right? They whisper about them in private and they talk about them. Go back to their home. What happened to Israel? They were whispering in their tents, weren't they? They were murmuring in their tents about, but who heard it, friend? Do you remember who heard it? Was it Moses that heard it? God heard it! And God was angry with it. And what did he do? He brought down swift judgment upon them for it. But that's in the Old Testament, right? He's a different God than the New Testament. We can get away with that now. God doesn't care if we do that in the church now. We can just go ahead and bite and devour each other, talk bad about each other, think bad about each other, think evil thoughts and do all those things. Because after all, we're, under, we're in the age of grace, so we can get away with it. No, we can't, friend. It'll eat us up. Not to mention what it does to our brother. But it'll eat us up. It'll destroy us. So whispers, they declare it secretly and with great reserve, the supposed faults of others. Backbiters proclaim them publicly. You're not being a spiritual soldier that keeps rank if you have a whispering or backbiting heart. You're being a double-minded soldier and a danger to the rest of the soldiers. 1 Corinthians 1.10 says, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing and that there be no divisions among you but that you be perfectly joined together into the same mind and the same judgment. You, you know why we see the favor of God here many times over and over again? Or we have seen it in the past. You want to know why? Because we do with one accord come together. And we saw it. We saw it with the day of fasting. We went out to Dinky Town. Boy, there's a difference, difference in the first time we went out and the second time we went out, wasn't there? how God's power fell down there and we were using amplification and everything else we're not even supposed to use. We use it the whole day. All these other things that happened at that time, why? Because there's power when you're in one accord. But when you start biting and devouring each other, you lose the power of God. God's not going to be in that, friend. He's not going to bless us for that. Why should he? Rebellion can creep in before you know it. Before you know it, you're compromising, you're backbiting, and you're whispering against the leadership like they did always against leadership, by the way. Nothing's changed, by the way. You understand that, right? From the Old Testament to the New Testament, nothing's changed. People are the same. I mean, I shouldn't say nothing's changed. A lot's changed. But in this, people have not changed. (laughs) That's a better way to say that. A lot's changed. But people have changed or haven't changed. They're the same, right? People are still rebellious. People were still murmurs. We're still complainers. We're still backbiters. We still have to repent of those things and get those things right with God. Amen. Still have to. A forward, a forward man soweth strife, and a whisper separateth chief friends. Folks, there ain't enough of us to do that. I just want you to know that there isn't. There isn't enough of us to have a spirit like that. There just isn't. I mean, we can't have it anyway because God commanded us not to, but there isn't enough of us to have a spirit like that. We'll destroy each other. 
And we'll never know what God really wanted to do with this church if, we be, if we're that way. We'll never really get to know what God wanted to do. I don't, want to, I don't want to live a life of regret. I don't want to look back. I'm already going to look back enough and reflect as I'm an old man someday if the Lord tarries is coming and I don't get shot by somebody or my head cut off. I, I want to look back. I don't, want to, I don't want it to be filled with, you know what, we could have went that extra mile, but we decided not to. We could have obeyed God. We could have, we could have put these things down. We could have dropped our pride could have done that Uh, let me ask you a question have you prayed for the people you complain about i mean have you earnestly prayed for them more than you've complained about them and murmured against them most of the time when somebody is murmuring and complaining they're not